Hi, everybody. It's our honor to have one of our NGA graduates. Uh, it's not too often that that happens. <laughs> and it's our honor to have uh, Ilkay K. Standard, K. Standard. And she is an entrepreneur, a School of Architecture graduate. And she's also now teaching at New York University, NYU, College of Engineering. And so what I told uh, Ilkay is once she is done with her presentation, I'll ask each and every student group to make your pitch to her, briefly describing how you plan to create value as a group and how do you plan to capture value and her feedback given her experience in architecture. And many of your projects have very strong architectural components. So that will definitely help. And this is a good opportunity for each one of you to get feedback from her. Having said that, Ilkay, I'm all yours. So take your time, make the presentation. Me and my assistant Utku actually get together this presentation specific for you guys. Um, we are also, you know, happy that we get to do this because we also um, kind of learn a lot from this. Um, I really like this image from NASA, kind of showing this science exploration technology. It is almost like organically growing and connecting us to Mars, which is, in in a sense, um, having that connection is um, maybe theoretic, ther theoretical, but um, also potentially real. Um, so when we think about construction in Mars, we are we need to respond to two things up front, which is similar to construction on Earth. You know, we we have to understand and resolve the issue of raw material and also to understand what kind of construction technologies we can use so that we could um, start in, in inhibition in, in Mars. Um, looking back at construction on Earth. I mean, so much is changing at the moment just because um, we know that and, you know, people like us out there trying to push a, making better this process, you know, increasing efficiencies and focusing on developing technologies. But in general, inefficiencies and duplication of work, you know, waste of material or even people time is, is a big issue that we are trying to address. And also, you know, things that are available back in um, building in Mars. So why Mars? I'm sure you guys talked about this, but maybe I could just summarize it as well. Um, so I found this diagram that shows us, um, you know, the check marks that Mars meets versus, you know, other planets or, or the moons. Um, in this case, as you see, except from radiation, we have uh, pretty much meet uh, all the other criteria is closer to us. And apparently we've been looking into Mars for a long time. And at the moment we have, I think about 16 um, uh, spacecrafts uh, either on Mars or orbiting and or, or watching. So one thing that actually interests me on the right side um, is the fact that we have this main asteroid belt right after Mars. And um, maybe this is something we don't have to be concerned right at the moment, but the fact that we expect sun to expand, and that means maybe to increase its gra gravitational force. And, and again, that's something maybe millions or billions years, not billions, but definitely millions of years ahead, maybe again, not something to concern, but I, I'm, almost concerned that we would bring, uh, we would attract this asteroid belt to sun and Earth and Mars, we are all in front of that. So maybe we need to start thinking about how to get out of this asteroid belt. Um, again, there are some uh, moons around Jupiter that has also many, um, many check boxes as well, like getting marked here. Uh, if you look into the challenges, um, obviously there are many challenges um, being so far, and um, what we need to um, aim for construction in Mars that it, it needs to be resilient, durable, and economical. 
Um, one of the biggest issues we are having is the high temperatures and the difference between the um, this low and high temperatures. Um, those conditions, uh, I will go over shortly, that is, even though similar to Earth, um, in the extreme uh, conditions. Um, but when it comes to economy, uh, I think two things can resolve that. One of them is, you know, two stone, no, one, one stone, two birds, meaning that our investment into construction technologies on Mars can help us on Earth. It has to vice versa. The things that we explore here to better our construction can be and should be used for Mars. And obviously privatization of space exploration was how kind of funding um, um, our projects on Mars. So looking at Mars, you know, environmental challenges, you know, mentioned about climate shortly, it's cold um, and there's extreme temperature changes, it has strong winds, um, it is much colder than Earth, it could be minus 53 to plus 23 degree um, Celsius, um, and one benefit, I guess, it has the same tilt, so we always have the same seasons and the same hours in the day which I'm sure will help humans um, get familiar living there. Um, other things we need to look into geological conditions. Um, you know, it has a lighter gravity and also we need to look into its soil, understanding how we can build on it or under it. Um, I, and other thing we need to understand, um, Marcia, Marcia, um, Mars has a very fine dust, uh, almost the size of asbestos, which is very dangerous for human lungs, but also machines as well. Um, we have to, we can't really carry much there. Uh, so we need to explore the materials that exist there and be, um, figure out how to use those. Uh, another issue, obviously radiation. Um, even though radiation is less than what Earth receives because of the distance, um, there's no atmosphere, so it is um, directly hitting on radiation, I mean, on Mars. Uh, but interesting thing, I actually recently found out, uh, the amount of radiation we have Mars, we can actually grow plants, even though it's still dangerous amounts for humans, um, we could grow plants. So that's good to know. Uh, on the right side, you see a diagram kind of showing the complex interior systems that we need to put together for human infrastructure, establish an infrastructure for humans to live and prosper. So I'm going to try to go over each of these items on the list. Um, please feel free to add if some of these are wrong. <laughs> I'm quite new to this topic. Um, again, we talked about um, this list here that is called extreme temperature changes. Um, the temperature change uh, in, on Mars is 60 degree versus on Earth is 30. So that's, um, again, it's a big change for us to adopt. Um, and I have this diagram mapped, uh, mapped over Mars, um, showing the different uh, compositions in the atmosphere. This could help us choose the right uh, site to choose for our first establishment. Um, of course, there will be other considerations for that, but for sure, uh, atmosphere is one of them. Looking into geology, um, there is soil and ice on Earth, uh, on Mars, on Earth too, of course. <laughs> um, so I have the sectional uh, cut through the uh, Martian soil. As you see, it's fine dust at the top and water reservoirs or frozen waters uh, below that and more um, bigger rocks at the bottom. Um, on the right side, uh, there's maps showing the basalt material, which we will look into to further understand that that's a material that we could use bind um, other materials similar to the way we do here for concrete and mixture of cements. Um, another material that's important for that process is volcanic ash. Again, we we couldn't find that. we know where they are um, located, and we we may choose to be close to those. Um, but of course, we also need to understand where is 
or ice sources so that we uh, we use that for our water. Um, so a couple photos from the um, looking to soil cells. Again, it's very fine, meaning that it's really dangerous for humans and also machines. Um, I, I also find out that there's actually a similar um, soil condition on Earth. Um, one happening is Columbia Hills region of Gustav Crater that has um, basalt uh, similar to Mars. And um, New Zealand has volcanic glass uh, from volcanic ash. Um, so I know that I think uh, the, these materials are being tested to you understand what can be done um, in Mars. Though interestingly, we have never received Mars uh, soil from Mars. It's what we know about soil in Mars is based on um, spacecraft doing testing for us and sending the results. So we actually haven't really touched the soil. Um, the next thing is, you know, Martian dust. Um, as you see, the difference between two images is crazy. So the, the dust is now something we should take lightly. Uh, this is like showing um, during a storm. It covers the whole planet. Pretty scary. I, don't, I guess we should know how long they last. Um, because that will affect how we will kind of create our resources for energy. Um, so the, on the left image, it's actually um, an artist uh, render, um, but it sure looks scary. Um, but then I also find out this resource project, um, I can't remember. So it's from um, Brown University. I think some of the students studied materials that could kind of rebel um, this dust from the buildings using this kind of fiber um, wires. Um, I think they charge them to uh, repel them so that they won't uh, attach. Um, so there is this interesting uh, solutions provided for um, any issues that we might have in Mars. Um, another important element is ice. On the left, uh, it's highlighting um, the majority of ice, I think, uh, underground, I am assuming, since we don't really see it. But then the poles has um, ice, frozen ice that, I mean, we can see. There's a, on the right side, um, there's a proposal, actually, and you can see the uh, mountains of ice. Um, and kind of rendered by um, uh, looking to Mars conditions. So I also find some um, interesting solutions. I am actually not sure which company provided this one, um, but this is basically proposing having a ice um, block around the living systems that helps uh, radiation and create an insulation because again, um, due to um, differences in temperature. Um, of course, building in ice is not something new to us. Um, we have at the top right, we uh, Inglo um, houses um, you know, built pretty much almost from the bricks made out of ice. Um, that's also, you know, we'll get into you know, 3D printing and also robotics, helping us do that maybe in, um, in Mars. So understanding the materials um, and how we could use them for construction, of course, very important. Institute resource utilization is what that's called. And you know, um, there are different combinations of materials being tested uh, based on um, uh, soil types, uh, soil in, in Mars. But then again, because we don't have actual soil in hand, we are uh, looking into materials that we have on, on Earth. Next is radiation. Uh, as you see on the left side, it shows the diagram for radiation amounts received um, in different parts of uh, Mars. Um, again, interesting enough that that radiation amount is safe for plants. So that means that we can actually have um, a structures that kind of lets the sunlight get in um, where um, 
there is also a, a proposed that water layer could prevent um, that amount of uh, radiation coming into the space. Um, but for sure, humans has to wear special um, clothing suits um, to to be in that space. Um, so when we look into challenges and opportunities, as much uh, as much as there are challenges, um, there are also opportunities that driven through those challenges. Um, so on the left side, we have we know that we have carbon and oxygen that we could use. There is um, hidden water ice, um, and we have metallic uh, resources. It gets you know, similar daylight cycle as we do here. Radiation is safe for plants. We are able to use solar energy, wind energy, and geothermal energy. Um, geothermal energy is kind of interesting to think about here because um, the temperature differences are so huge that difference can be utilized um, and you know provide us cooling and heating uh, for spaces that we will be living. Obviously, the challenges are the fact that there is the radiation is not human safe. Uh, the pressure is different um, and we cannot live uh, exposed to that pressure and the temperature. Again, the, we don't have breathable air and water is not ready to be used. Um, that's something we have to explore. Um, so looking into industry resources and um, some of the items that I want to focus when we talk about infrastructure construction, you know, material science, energy resources, construction technologies, and I want to show some design proposals from um, architectural professionals and also lastly looking into the things that we need essentially oxygen, water and fruit production, even though I'm not really getting into much of detail of that, um, that's kind of out of my scope. Um, so Mars does provide us some durable materials. Uh, we can use intelligence construction to build and we are able to use underground space exploitation uh, in Mars. Uh, one interesting thing to know, because there is no seas or water on the surface, the amount of uh, real estate on Mars is equivalent to what we have on Earth. Um, so we could fit everyone <laughs> there. Um, so when it comes to opportunities, um, NASA obviously leading some of the studies looking into different um, um, technologies that could help us build and live in, in Mars. And I guess the most important one is additive construction and that tackles into multiple um, in multiple issues from you know printing plastic to um, health and medical supplies that we will need and electronics we will need and make, make, uh, metallics and how, you know, using recyclable materials. Um, there's an example of, you know, how we could be using some robotics um, for additive manufacturing, which kind of has an assembly line. Um, so that does create some limitation in terms of space. So this is a diagram I took from BIG Architecture. They kind of nicely organize this information of you know, what kind of construction technologies we can use um, on Earth we are we have used in the past if you look into our civilization, you know, settlement starting uh, with sewing uh, fabrics and you know, stacking ice blocks or even maybe mud blocks and uh, hiding, a, you know, creating spaces underground or in caves um, in, in a way to um, you know, respond to environmental um, conditions on Earth and which you know, kind of responds to the things that we want to do in Mars, you know, using inflatable um, surfaces and using 3D printing for the stacking construction and digging under the ground with the boring systems. Um, Again, there's this comparison of these um, ideas and you know, pros and uh, cons. Um, basically, majority of what seems to be uh, applicable is being able to have 
system that covers uh, for plants to be able to you know, receive the daylight they need and also us to get daylight under the ground, being able to you know, live under the ground. And that means that look, this three system can be combined into one city in a way. Um, so they, because they all have pros and cons that needs to be uh, considered. Um, there are some examples here by uh, you know architectural firms BIG, Hassel, and AI Space Factory, um, focusing on three D printing. Three um, D printing is a most logical way to start thinking how to build in Mars, due to the fact that there is um, Martian soil can be used uh, for printing and. Similar materials are again being tested right now on Earth um, to test these ideas. Um, on the right, actually, this example here um, again goes back to the idea of whatever we do for Mars, we could use back in Earth. They are actually building these homes on Earth for living. And uh, you know, why not? Again, an example that we could utilize underground. Uh, which protects us from many elements of Mars. Um, this is a photo from NASA, I believe, showing 3D printing and robotics um, being able to create this uh, living spaces. Um, robotics, obviously, an important aspect of that. Um, <laughs> we, when we think about robotics, we think about a robot that's similar to human. Probably that's not the case. Um, I don't know if you guys seen Vol E. Maybe we will have something like this. If you haven't seen this movie, take a look at it. Um, and then there is this uh, image from NASA, I believe again, um, showing realistically what, what kind of robots that we will be using. And also we have to think about how to use one robot for multiple purposes. Again, our resources are so minimal. We have to uh, reuse everything and recycle everything. Again, um, so this is another robotics idea that can um, bring, you know, modular items together to build um, or either living system uh, spaces or uh, energy collection resources. So another thing, important thing, I guess, um, energy resources and what is being considered mostly is as a, as a topic thermal electric generators, um, sonal panels, the wind, uh, okay, and there's a duplication there. Um, the third one should be, uh, or the fourth one actually should be geothermal, as we mentioned previously. Um, so each system has certain problems, um, but um, first two systems are currently being used in spacecraft and tested. Um, the issues with solar panels is during wind um, that may, you know, you know, lower our uh, production for energy. Um, the same way, it's a topic uh, system is actually um, seems to be the best in terms of responding to external environment, which will not be um, affected as much, and. Um, um, I think there are also ways to look into how we could um, kind of use the wind force um, uh, to produce energy. So, I mean, lastly, looking into uh, similarities on Earth, you know, what kind of experience we have on Earth, first settlements, how they grew, how they start building, and um, you know, what are similar to our Mars. And, you know, common issues that we can look into, um, both in construction, but also we have uh, spaces like deserts and you know poles that has similar hot and cold conditions of Mars, and you know the technologies that we are currently using on Earth that you know we should be thinking about on Mars as well, and you know general construction issues of like design, construction, and chains of life. If you really want to build cities on Mars, obviously those become uh, important thing to kind of look. Um, again, as a note, it's kind of interesting to think about build, you know, 
starting a settlement in Mars, so similar the way we started on Earth, but then, of course, environmental conditions are friendly for humans to live, but they knew very little. Um, we know much more than that. You know, we have technology and we can adapt better and faster. Um, so some images um, kind of showing how we could approach the issues on Mars, you know, being being able to build underground, uh, on the rocks, using soil, uh, so using um, ice blocks, um, and being able to, you know, digging under the ground to get our water. And I think there are systems to create oxygen from the air and we will have plants to help with that and food production also. You know, the people who are living there will be most likely vegetarian. Um, even though today we have systems to produce, um, you know, synthetic meat. Um, so, you know, I don't think food will be an issue there. Um, I think that well, that, well, okay, so I have, I want to show some of the proposals from um, designers. Um, when we look into building something efficient, it really makes sense for us to look into biomimicry, which is basically looking in, into biology and understanding, you know, the how plants and animals build their living spaces and the fact that they are most efficient through the evolution and they are able to live also, you know, different con um, environmental conditions than human does. In this case, this is an example of, you know, how ants build underground. Um, so this is an inspiration for this design proposal um, and looking into, again, how ants go underground, um, they're able to create their spaces. And I will shortly show you an example, kind of if this each unit are where it, spaces for people to live on the you know surfaces um, on the vertical surfaces of Mars, which will protect us from uh, radiation dust and um, provide us daylight uh, inside our spaces. Um, so the architectural considerations are you know how to mitigate environmental conditions, use optimizing the limited resources, how to build efficient, fast, um, and allowing spa these spaces to, you know, humans to prosper. And largely what we have to ask is, you know, what the units look like where individually people live, but also in, in larger scale, how um, cities would look like. And I have some <clears throat> other examples that I found that are more out of box approaches, how to resolve this. Um, so I'm happy to kind of show those. So majority of the proposals that I find, you know, proposes a system similar to BIG showing here, you know, having inflatable uh, general structure and, you know, dome shape is mainly used because of the efficiency of space creation and uh, less material use. Um, and we have to start thinking about, you know, in terms of use of the spaces, how they have to be uh, coordinated and how they should be placed so that um, we have access to uh, production uh, plant areas, you know, research areas, living spaces, and all, all those um, things that we will need. Um, I also find some uh, competition entries. These are some of the students as well. Uh, MIT students were studying this idea of how space should be planned. Um, they are you know, proposing a cultural political center with green and connecting with tunnels to the residential areas and having uh, maybe plants and um, agriculture areas. This is also connecting back into a central location. Um, I wanted to show this because architects as we start from scratch, basically building, we need to think about construction systems themselves, but also the use of space. Um, there's also, this screenshot is not very uh, clear, but what I want to show here is again, a dome structure is preferred and being able to create spaces 
hanging on the space um, underground, being able to integrate in these plants. Um, I think this is also a research project. Um, I'm not quite sure what school that was. Um, some examples again, uh, being able to use, you know, dome kind of structure and um, 3D printed buildings above, and also being able to have spaces below ground uh, for especially the times of you know solar flares when the radiation is much higher. Um, some examples again at the bottom, similar concepts um, in, in this project actually you are having the solar panels up here and they utilize the um, vertical surface here to have um, a living spaces, as I showed, uh, similar to you know how ants kind of create their spaces as well. Also, if you look into inside of the spaces, what they might look like, especially if you think about people living there for their lifetime, and maybe people being born there and just living there. Um, so that's very likely. Um, that being said, I actually want to recommend all the students um, watch a TV show called Expanse. Um, if if you haven't watched it, please make sure to watch it. It's it's basically showing how if we leave planetary, uh, in having you know lunar you know being on the moon mars maybe on the aster belt as well and you know people who are after generations that are born on those places their biological differences uh you know they can't really go back to earth because they are not used to the pressure the differences it's interesting to look into like so far ahead in the future and kind of be impressed by you know how movies give us these ideas of very realistic um, op opportunities or also like things to think about ahead of time. Um, so one interesting idea that came, that I wanted to share is, um, I'm not sure again who proposed this, but uh, they were proposing that you know, exploding the soil and um, being able to create uh, this magnetic field with microwaves. Uh, waves creating this structure by um allowing this dust particles attaching to the structure and being able to create a skeleton external skeleton um i thought that's interesting in the way that that's a very different approach it's using the materials on site and also it's um it doesn't necessarily uses uh the you know, structure previous um, examples of you know, 3D printing um, or um, just robotics alone. Um, I think this is also kind of showing how space planning can be, um, you know, having uh, underground and also vertical elements um, in being able to use. So apparently this is from Matthew from <laughs> Ball State University. And lastly, um, I found that there is this book series that kind of have red Mars, green Mars, and blue Mars. Maybe this is not such a far ahead um, um, process. Maybe these are all potentially possible for us. Maybe not for us to see, but for next generations. And I think that is all for me. Awesome. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much, Ilke. That this was a very nice uh, and 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 eye opener presentation. Thank you. Um, so I'll, I'll open it up to the students, but a few observations building on uh, what you just said and what we had talked about in the class. So you had mentioned like food. So um, the students had attended a presentation by an Israeli company called Aleph farms and they are trying to create uh, beef, I guess, uh, steaks and stuff like that um, for the astronauts. Mm -hmm. So I, I thought that was kind of a nice similarity that we had. But before I open up to the students, uh, let me ask you this question. So in one of the slides you had like, there were layers of glass and air 
and water mm -hmm. to prevent the radiation. Now, many of the student projects are in the cis lunar space and the cis Martian space. Do you think that same architectural combination of glass, air, and water can also work in vacuum, like not on the surface of Mars, but in the cis lunar or the cis Martian space? I'm not quite sure actually um, if that could work. Um, but it seems like that's an idea for Mars, potentially for Moon. Um, but um, I'm not quite sure if the, just in space alone um, that is um, enough to protect from radiation. Um, but that was for for plants. I'm not sure if that was safe for humans to still be in that space. Right. Awesome. But see, those are systems I think for students to kind of look into and. There's so many different problems that that needs to be resolved. Um, looking into those, how to provide solution for those problems, I think is one way to approach you know, entrepreneurship in this field. There's a lot to resolve um, right. and many different aspects to this as well. You know, you could look into materials, you could look into systems, the technology, you know, from plants, from the point of biology, uh, what can we grow there and how we can do food, um, how to produce oxygen. So there is so much actually, so many opportunities to explore. Um, right. I'm excited to hear 